Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. This is Nellie Deutsch, and it's a privilege to be here. All right, if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and what you're doing and where you are and anything else you'd like to add. And while you're doing that, I am taking care of technology. All right, information. The more you add, the more it makes this a real people's uh, class and not a face to face class at a university in a hall or a conference where people cannot communicate and they have to be polite. And we don't want to be polite. We want to learn. And I've never heard of anyone learning by being polite. Okay. All right. So feel free to use the chat box as we go. If you don't know who I am, I'm Nellie Deutsch. I'm an online and face to face and blended learning teacher. I teach English as a foreign language and I teach other things that are connected to technology and meditation. <laughs> nice combination. All right, so started. This is the end. Well, the end of the second week is coming around. I know many of you don't want to hear it, but we have another two days so you can get your badge within the next two days. What kind of meditation? Mindfulness. <laughs> okay, it's not really meditation. It's more of a mindful way of uh, focusing. Okay, so just um, a little bit about um, the session today. There's the link to, I believe it's the live class if you want to share it, but that's not what I intended to share with you. What I wanted to share with you, and I've added to the top of um, the chat box, which you can copy later on, is uh, the presentation to this session. All right, so I think it's really important that you follow it and are able to click on the links since uh, you can no longer do that in the live online class. In other words, if you click on the whiteboard, you won't get very much. Okay, so I think I've, oh, Thomas has also added it. All right, thank you for being so fast. Great, so everything on this page is clickable. All right, so there's the course syllabus, but you can also get it in the uh, course itself, the YouTube playlist, Facebook group, Moodle for Teachers community, on Google, communities and of course the live online class so let's get started facilitators who are helping out on a voluntary basis this is all volunteer Helena is first Dr. Ludmilla Smirnova who's super busy Nancy Zingrone who's also super busy but is able to make it and help out I am super busy <laughs> but I am there, and so is Thomas, super busy, but he's also there. So we do what we can, and uh, we're depending on you to do your part and help one another. The more you help one another, the more you will learn. All right, so uh, this is agenda for today. Uh, we'll be going over, again, the fact that there are a few places that you can access. You can access the WizIQ course area. And there is the link to it on the PowerPoint presentation. The live online classes, make sure that you go through the list and click on it for the class and for the recording. It's the same link. The Moodle student course where you're in as a student and you have no editing rights. And in the teacher practice area where you have editing rights as a teacher. 
And uh, next week, we'll be talking about your editing rights as a manager. Yes, you're going to go from a teacher to a manager so that you can learn about the blocks, okay, which you can't as a teacher. We'll also be talking about how to get a topic. Many of you have found it very difficult to get a topic. How do you grab a topic in the teacher practice area? How do you start a support forum, which is an activity that we're going to talk about today? We've talked about resources so far and not activities. You're going to learn how to get a badge if you missed it for week one, how you can get one for week two and week three. We'll talk about the rich editor, which is really important, and about your profile reports. Yes, you can access your profile reports and find out what you've done, what you haven't done, what you need to do, and so on. We'll also talk about week three activities in a Moodle course, in this case, uh, in the practice area. And you'll be doing the discussion forum for activities, and you'll also uh, access the support form. Actually, getting a badge for week two was the easiest. And week three is going to be just as easy. All right, so first thing, teacher practice area, or TPA, where you need to get a topic and you need to start a support form activity. In week two, you had to access your topic area and use the resources. Now, many of you are confused by resources because a resource has a completely different meaning in a Moodle course. And I believe Nancy had gone through it but many of you did not completely understand the difference. And those of you who did your tasks did not do it correctly. Very few of you managed to understand that resources are not activities. All right, so what is a resource? No, Alexandra. Activities are for week three. Week two are only resources. Okay, so week two is about resources. That's right. So let's see if you can think of one resource and you can take a look at your teacher practice area and your topic area. So yes, it's a book, it's an IMS, it's a label, it's a folder, <laughs> it's a page resource, and it's a URL or a link. That's all. There are altogether seven resources. Okay, just seven. That's all. Now you didn't have to fully understand them. All you had to do was add them. Just go into the course area and your topic area and go into resources and add one at a time. And while you're adding them, you could have looked at them and thought about them and so on. But this is only a first course in Moodle. There's a lot more to do, and we don't expect you to do that much. So um, that's all you had to do for week two, basically. Yeah, of course, instructions are never clear, and teachers are never good enough, and um, everybody's to blame, but that's not going to move us forward very much, is it? But let's, um, let's go through it again. Read, as Thomas says, read, read and read, and read again. And if you don't understand, ask questions, and read, and so on. All right, so um, that's all, yes, Jeff, that's all. Just add them and show that you know that those are resources. And create a tutorial, of course, to make it interesting. 
All right, so that's resources for week two. Week three are activities. All right, so uh, do I have support here from uh, WizIQ? I uh, don't think so. All right, so support if you, support if you're here for WizIQ, raise your hand and let me know when you come in. All right, yes, all seven, Jeff. That's right. All right, so teacher practice area. Next week, we're not two weeks, we're going to do in week four, we're going to do the blocks, and then you're going to be using the Moodle for managers practice area. So that's what's going to lie ahead. Those of you that think you know Moodle, you're going to learn more. All right, so uh, we're also going to discuss badges. How do you get a badge for week one? Now, many of you got badges for week one, even though week one was a lot more complicated than week two. All right, so what did you have to do for week one to get a badge? You had to do one of two things, either read or do. And there were only, I believe, there was only one do actually, but lots of reading. Okay, and I created a PowerPoint, well, not a PowerPoint, a uh, YouTube video that I think will help you understand how to create a tutorial and how to follow the course and get a badge. Okay, I have repeated it for weeks one and two for those of you who didn't manage to get a badge so that you can get a badge. And it's not that difficult. In fact, I got a badge as a student in how many minutes? I think in about 14 minutes or maybe less. I think it was less, a lot less. But I created a video of 16 minutes where I walk you through how you can, oh, let me just, um, how you can get your badge in a couple of minutes for week one. Welcome to Moodle for Okay, Teachers. so let me share that with you so you can watch it. All right, so here it is. Okay, there it is. You'll, Amina, you'll get better and better. And you'll always learn something because you'll always notice something on Moodle. Plus, Moodle keeps um, upgrading itself, so there are always some new things. So learning never really stops. You'll always find new ways of using Moodle. Okay, so there's the link on how you can get your badge for weeks one and two. And I think I went into three as well, but I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, read it. I know you got it. <laughs> I mean, so read it very quickly and you'll manage. All right, so how did you, those of you who got your badge for week two, okay, in a minute, I'll tell you how you can tell us, okay? Give us these steps. Anyways, the badge for week one, you have to view all the support forum, okay, all the tabs. And that means that you have to go through the book resource. You don't just open it up. You have to go through the pages to be able to get your tick. It's all about getting your box ticked. And that's what I show in the video. In the video, you will see how I get my boxes ticked off, okay, in a very quick way. All right, I, I'll show you the fast way of doing it. And then uh, for the introduction, you have to start a new discussion topic and respond to one person. So actually, there's only one uh, real task for week one. Everything else is just reading. Isn't that easy? Just one little task. All you have to do for week one, actually, is uh, write one discussion, oops, sorry about that. Write one discussion topic. Okay, there, let me undo that. Write one discussion topic and respond to somebody else. Everything else is read. In week two, 
All right, let's see. What do you have to do in week two? If you could just add that in the chat box. There's one read and one do. So what do you have to do for week two to get a badge? Okay, let's see if you can come up with it. Okay, try to focus and respond. Okay, now. What do you have to do? Okay, I'm working on the, my book. Why are you working on your book? What do you have to do in week two to get a badge? That's right, Sheila, in the form for resources. What do you have to do there? Let's see. Post. Okay, create. Keep them coming. Add resources. So you'll get the, uh, the words right eventually. Add resources. Very good, WA. Now we're getting it because it says add uh, resource. That's what it says in the add an activity or a resource. It says add at the end. It doesn't say save. It says add. All right, so let me uh, show you this in more detail. All right, so in week two, all you have to do is, first of all, you have to view the support form. Only one. What does it mean to view? You go into it, you look at it, and you go out. And you get a tick. And then you have to go to the resource form. You start a new topic. Okay, start a new topic. You add an image or a tutorial of all the resources, all the seven resources that you started in your topic area, and then you respond to somebody else. That's it. That's all you had to do for week two. And in week three, you view the support form activities, the support form. You just view it. And then you do all the activities and there are more than seven, and then you respond to somebody else. Now the question is, how do you do the activities? Okay, what does it mean to do an activity from my perspective and this course? Okay, what does it mean to do an activity? Do. Yeah, what does it mean? It means to create a tutorial if you can, because that's the best way to remember the way Nancy did. She created a tutorial using her uh, Moodle, but I want you to use the teacher practice area and just follow what Nancy did for week two. That's all. So you create a tutorial, exactly, and some people did it and you did it beautifully. All right, so here again, for those of you who need to see it again, this is what you do for week one. This is what you do for week two. This is what you do for week three. Not much. Okay, the problem is that most of us get so excited by technology that we go all over the place and we do a lot of other things. And that's what you've been doing. You've been doing a lot of things, a lot of extra things, other things that you didn't have to, which is great. But for some of you, it could be a bit overwhelming. All right, so let's take a look at the editor. The editor is really important because it has a lot of features. And I mentioned this in the first week. It has a lot of features that are very important and you should practice using it. Okay, so far you practiced adding images right here. You also practice adding smileys. You've added videos, YouTube. Most of you have practiced adding YouTubes. You've also practiced adding Poodle in the first week. Some of you, not all of you. You've also used, you try to use HTML, but you can't embed because uh, Moodle doesn't like it when people embed because there are lots of uh, malicious scripts that go with the embed. So Moodle likes to protect itself. Some of you did not see the editor. Some of the reasons 
could be that you didn't see the fact that you can enlarge it and then maybe your screen is a bit small there are lots of reasons why you might not see the editor so what you can do is you can enlarge it in Moodle 2.6 you will not have this problem because there's no need to enlarge the editor looks completely different but in Moodle 2 point plus 4 and 5 you need to enlarge it and there are two ways you can enlarge it you can go over here and make it larger right in it and then minimize it again to save it or you can pull it see here at the bottom right hand side and you can make it larger that way but I suggest some people ask me can I just add from my Word document yes you can there's a Word document you can create a Word document copy it directly by clicking on this so try all of these features try to focus because you're going all over the place focus on the editor you need to learn how to use it so that you can make the most of it a rich tiny MC is what we call this kind of editor the next one in Moodle 2.6 is going to be different it's not exactly a tiny MC it's something else many of you do not know how to hyperlink words and links and this is really important it's important to always hyperlink words unless you're on Facebook and the page is uh, automatically hyperlinked you need to take a word to highlight it in order to enable someone else to click on it all right so do that I believe Moodle does not like Chrome and it does not like Explorer for some people uh, I hear that uh, Firefox is best because it's also open source but I use Safari in my Apple with my Apple and I use Chrome when I use my PC so I don't know for some people it works and for others it doesn't so it's up to you to try things out but generally Moodle is very user-friendly it doesn't take a lot of memory and it's quite easy all right so how do you hyperlink words I also showed that in the video that I shared with you so watch the video and you'll get that as well media learn to add media practice adding YouTube videos and everything else that's there some things some uh, they're called suppository repositories are not really working right now they will be working because we have to um, keep updating every time we upgrade a Moodle we have to take care of this and um, we didn't so we have to do it so we'll do it by next week um, take a look at images how you can uh, add images make them larger make minimize them and so on tables try to add tables and see how you can play around with the tables also, uh, I mentioned word repositories, not suppositories. Sorry, it's repositories. Also, try Poodle. And, of course, YouTube videos. All right. Self-reports. You've asked, how do I know what I'm doing? How do I know if I did it, if I didn't do it? How come Moodle knows it and I don't know it? I want to know what I'm doing. Well, you can all know what you're doing by going into your profile under the course under the course and going into self reports okay so notice I've mentioned this in week one when we had our first meeting before we started but um, we have to repeat these things usually people don't get it until they have a question once they have a question there are more able to accept the answer so keep that in mind when you have your students too it's not enough to talk to them about things uh, they have to be ready with questions before they learn anything all right so here is the administration of a student like you what you'll see under course administration is the name of the course and unenroll me if you want to unenroll at any time 
In addition, you'll have my profile settings. How many of you have seen this? Can you give me a thumbs up if you've seen this before or if this is all completely new? And that's fine. If it's new, then we'll just have to um, Okay, let me just uh, try to no fill. All right, so let me know if you've seen this. Okay, the orange box. I see anybody not see it? The orange box. On the left, you have this information is important. Okay, it's important to you, it's important to your students. Familiarize yourself. Things will become easier to handle because there's lots of. Um, Lots of information, left, center, and right. And the more you work on Moodle, the easier it will be on your eyes. And if you're reading this in a foreign language, it may make it even more difficult. So try to stick to English for now, if you can. Okay, and then under all this, you have my profile settings. Okay, right here. Okay, so here is my profile settings in a blue box. Okay, and I hope you've seen that too. Under my profile settings, you will see the following. Okay, notice what's here. Edit profile, change your passwords. Don't worry about security keys, messaging, the messages you get, blogs, badges, and activity reports. Under activity reports, you might want to check all of these to see what you've done. And as a teacher, you can also see what your students do. Okay, so uh, check it out and see. You can see today's logs. Don't be afraid to go into it. Nothing will happen. Uh, you can't break anything or uh, do any harm. Okay, um, you're not able to do any harm. You don't have the rights. You're not administrators. So you can't do anything wrong or a manager of the course. Okay, so you can't delete anything. Don't feel bad in the course. Okay, so please uh, go into very good. I see Katrina says she does it all the time. That's excellent. No deadlines. <laughs> Only for the course, not for the weeks. Okay. So you've got your activity, today's logs, all logs, and then you have outline, report, and your complete report. And if you want to know, you also get information about your IP, so you know where you were. Lots of information there. Okay, so that's where you can find out what you've been doing. And this is what it looks like. I showed you this in week one those of you that remember. Okay, so this is uh, what you have. You have the date, you have your IP, your name. Okay, uh, if you viewed, okay, view, or if you added a post, remember? And that's how you can find out what you've done and not. Now the teacher practice area in the student course where you're a student, you have to go into this tab in Moodle for Teachers Evo 14 and click on it. It says teacher course practice area. Click on the image above. Okay, and where participants get editing rights as teachers so that they can... How many of you read this? Okay, try to read. Um, I always tell my students, because they're English language learners, that just by being in Moodle, <laughs> their English will improve their reading comprehension because they have to do a lot of reading. And they're not native speakers of English, so, you know, it's, it's really beneficial to them. But let's take a look at the progress. I'm in the teacher practice area, and this is what I see. What does it mean? Okay, now this is a question for you. What does it mean? Let's see if you can answer the question. Okay, I'm referring to this. First of all, where am I? Okay, this is the first question. If you can add it in the chat box. Where am I? Okay, where am I? 
in the green box. Okay, where? Oh, very good, Sheila. Okay, excellent. Sheila says, I'm in topic 151. Now, how does Sheila know that? And I see others know it too. Excellent. How do you know? Okay, so there's a, there's a little bit of thinking. Okay, there are arrows going to the left and right, which means that in the middle it's 151. Okay, so that's important. It is important. Okay, because you have to know where you are. All right, so what is wrong with this? Notice it's my progress is a question mark. And I'm supposed to be a teacher here. As a teacher, what's wrong? What's wrong? What? Yeah, it's empty. But I'm a teacher. A teacher is supposed to see something, right? A teacher is supposed to have editing rights. What is going on here? But Sabrina, I'm a teacher. I don't need to go through progress. I didn't do anything. Ah, wow, Sheila, you are good. All right, so let's see what's wrong with this and what it should look like. This is what it should look like. This is the correct, this is what it should look like for the teacher. I should be able to have a plus sign, right? Here is the plus. I should be able to see that or I'm stuck as a teacher. So that's right. What I need to do is I need to turn editing on. If editing is not turned on, I am stuck. And teachers do not want to be stuck. Okay, so please turn editing on at the top right. And then you'll be able to see that you are in number 151 and you need to click on add an activity or resource. Now, are they the same? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. If they're the same, thumbs up. If they're different, thumbs down. Are they different or are they the same? Thumbs up, they're the same. Thumb, thumbs down, they're different. Why is everybody putting their thumbs down? Why are you putting your thumbs down? Oh, Hassan put his thumb up. Thank you. All right. So are they different or are <laughs> two thumbs up? Are they different or are they the same? You got to know. And if you don't know, you can go check. Jeff says thumbs down. Don't let me confuse you. I can be pretty uh, devilish in confusing people. All right, so <laughs> they're different. All right, so everybody who put their thumbs down is right. Okay, so thumbs down is correct. There it is. Okay, thumbs down is correct. Okay, resources and activities are completely different, and you have to be aware of the differences as you work. Okay, keep that in mind. And you can give yourself a star if you got it right. Okay, so the first thing you do when you go into the teacher practice area is turn editing on. And then you go to add an activity. What's the next stage when you go into the teacher practice? Can somebody add the teacher practice area link? I also talk about links. Every page on Moodle, every brownish uh, writing is a link, and it has a link in the browser window. It's like Moodle has millions of pages, lots of pages. All right, there, Helena has it. Very good, Helena. I can tell because it's 28. Thank you, Helena. That's the course practice area for this course. Okay, that's the teacher practice area because you're going to have a manager practice area in week four. So get ready for that. Okay, thank you for everybody. Thank you, Amina and Alexandra. All right, great. Okay, so let's go on to 
the list of activity oh I didn't ask you there was another question that I forgot to ask you what do you do once you go into add an activity for week two what were you supposed to do in week two okay let me add that in week two what were you supposed to do resources 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 but before resources you were supposed to go to label why were you supposed to go to label in week two why go to label what were you supposed to do that's right Gwen excellent excellent you were supposed to add your name and then Thomas also suggested together with me that you add a support forum but you didn't know how to because you didn't know anything about activities so now you're gonna go in if you haven't done it already and you're going to add a support form what is a support form is it an activity or is it a resource what is a support that's right it's an activity and since you were not responsible for activities in week two um, we didn't deduct points <laughs> You're not, uh, you're not going to lose anything for not doing the support form. So in week three, you should create, add a support form for yourself, okay? Because that's an activity. The label we added our name in week one. That's right. And those of you that didn't add it in week one, added it in week two. Okay, because some people came in late. All right, so these are the activities. How many activities are there all together? If you can give me a number, how many activities? Activities, Jeff, not uh, resources. Must be a lucky seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Now, does every Moodle course have seventeen activities? By the way, they're called plugins. No, 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 no. No, that's right, no. Oh, no video. Sorry, I took my video off. Yes. Sometimes I get, yes, I took my video off, but there it is. It's back. Okay, I guess you, you enjoy looking at a video. I thought you were focusing on the whiteboard. This is being recorded for YouTube without um, the attendee list and without the, uh, the chat box. Okay. Yeah, they're all called plugins. Resources and activities are all called plugins. And um, let's see, the Moodle, the raw Moodle comes with uh, not all of these. Okay, it doesn't come with all of them. Okay, I'll tell you what it doesn't, what we've added so far, and we're going to add uh, some more things. It looks like my video is kind of. Is my video, yeah, I look like I doubt. Is my video kind of frozen? Is it, fr it looks kind of strange. Yeah, it is frozen, isn't it? Even though I can see my lips kind of moving, but it depends on your connection. Yeah, now it's unfrozen. All right, let me, let me just uh, take it off for a minute. So you can focus on the whiteboard and not on my, on my video. Okay, so can you see the whiteboard? No, you can't see the whiteboard. No, I took off my video. I turned it off. Okay, so just the whiteboard for now. And you can hear my voice. All right, great. Okay, so no video for now. Uh, take a look at the list here. And let me show you what is not part of the Moodle. WizIQ is not part of it. Hot Potatoes is not part of it. Um, let's see, what else did I add? Um, I think choice, well, choice is the checklist I think I also added, if I'm not mistaken. 
the checklist is not part of it. I think that's it. I think everything else is pretty raw. Okay, these are the uh, mind map. Did I add the mind map too? Nancy, is the, did I add, is the mind map an extra? Or does it come with it? Extra. Okay, in any case, you can add a lot of activities. Uh, I think I have in some of my other Moodles, I also have games, for example. Poodle is also added, and it will appear uh, under uh, assignments. Okay, it'll appear under assignments, and assignments is not here if you notice. Okay, assignments is not here, but it is there. Okay, so um, there are more. Where are the assignments exactly? The assignments come before C. Okay, so what's missing? There are more than 17. Okay, I only added 17 on the whiteboard. But how many are there all together in your teacher practice area? Okay, let's see. How many are there? If you could just go and check. All you have to do is minimize the WizIQ class at the top left. You minimize it and then it'll stay and then you go and check. I can't screen share because I uh, until next week, there's a problem with WizIQ this week with the Macs because I um, upgraded the Java and I made a mess. I wasn't supposed to upgrade the Java. So I can't screen share right now, but if you go into the Moodle course, you will be able to see the teacher area, and then Moodle for Teachers teacher area, and then go into Edit in your uh, area. Okay, so I'm waiting for that to happen. And I believe Helena and some others added the link to the teacher practice area. So take a look at the activities. How many are there? I think as a group, I think you've used all of them by now, but maybe I'm mistaken. I see somebody added to, uh, if you add things um, anywhere but in your topic area, we will delete it. Okay, the Moodle police will delete it. Remember, Moodle has a tracking system. Oh, I see everybody's in there. I think the whole classroom's in there right now. Okay, so let's see how many. It's a lot more than 17. Okay, so take a look at it. Tom, you only see 17? You don't see the assignments and everything else before the C? No, I don't mean in the, um, on the whiteboard. I mean in the actual um, Moodle for Teachers, Evo. No assignments? 
Only seventeen. Katrina, no assignments, only Now, any ideas why that would happen? What happened to the assignments and everything else before C? Because there are a lot more than 17. Exactly, that's right, you have no permission. Okay, you have no permission for the other ones, but you will have permission uh, in week four. Okay, when you go into the Moodle for managers, okay, that's when you'll get the other ones. Okay, so right now you only have these. Okay, so you'll have to be patient, but I think that's enough for week three. What I suggest you do is you don't have to go into each one of them to try them out. What you do need is simply to go through them, create a tutorial, explain perhaps how different they are, and you can get explanations right here. Once you click on one, let's say you click on the chat, you'll get the explanation on the right. Okay, so learn about what they can do, think about them, but don't worry if they don't work. Okay, that's not the point right now. The point is just to learn about them, know of them, and then you'll have plenty of chances to develop things with them. Right now, the quiz and uh, the database do not work. Everything else does work. Uh, and the reason they don't work is because of Poodle. Okay, Poodle goes with the assignments and it caused a bit of problems. Okay, so adding Poodle caused some problems and we're fixing it. It'll be ready by um, today's the 25th in about four days, three to four days, it should be ready. Okay, so don't worry about uh, the quiz and the database right now. It will be ready. Okay, so do everything else and um, don't try to create anything with the quiz or the database. Okay, so you'll have plenty of time in uh, week three. Okay, so explore, try them out. And the main focus this week is on creating a tutorial. Many of you have already created a tutorial. I think about seven of you. Uh, anyone here create, if you could raise your hand, if you create a tutorial the way Nancy had done using either Screencast-O-Matic or MoveNote. I don't know what you prefer. MoveNote or Screencast-O-Matic. Okay, but get ready to try these out because in the final week you're going to, your final project will be to create a tutorial. So the more you practice now. So Jing is basically a short video, five minutes, and uh, images. Screencast-O-Matic is for videos and you can also upload them to YouTube. And MoveNote is both text PowerPoint and audio. Okay, excellent. Very good, Helena. All right, so create a tutorial about the different activities that are currently available. Yes, it's exactly, Nancy, it is. It's exactly like Present Me, but I think it's a lot better. Try them both and see which one you like more, I think. And Move Note, by the way, is free while present me, well, maybe very cheap, but it's not free. 
yeah, free. That's why I love Mood Note. And I think it's a lot more fun. It's more developed. Okay, so uh, Webinaria is free. Oh, okay. So maybe you can use that, Stella, and uh, we can learn from you. Screencast-O-Matic is free. No, it's free forever. I don't know what Screencast is, but Screencast-O-Matic is free. All right, so let's see if there are any questions. We've got a couple of minutes left. Are there any questions? I hope that next week I'll be able to screen share again. Now I wish I had used my real course in this exercise. Support forms, everything. I think I paid $10. Nancy, I paid $30 for three years for Screencast-O-Matic. But what, what's uh, different, if you pay money, you get the writing tools. But if you don't want the writing tools, why pay anything? Uh, Leslie, I like your word of references. They're not references. They're uh, Moodle features, if you like, or plugins, resources, and activities. I wouldn't worry, Harriet, about the SCORM package and all these things because you may not use them. You just have to be aware of the fact that they're there. Try them out. Is Vichelle there? If Vichelle is here, because I asked Vichelle from WizIQ, to come in, let's see, is uh, support here from WizIQ? I don't see support. He's here? Okay, Vichelle, if you could raise your hand, that would be great because I'd like to screen share. That's one of the reasons why I asked Vichelle to come in. But I don't see... Um, Okay, I don't see him. All right. Uh, Aki says, there are way someone can check and see. Oh, it's going so fast. Let me try to um, read it again. Aki, let me see if I can find. Oh, I see Vichelle is here. Okay, Vichelle, could you screen share? I'll, and I'll extend the class so uh, we can go into... That's great. Okay, what I'd like you to screen share, if it's possible, is... Um, you can. Okay, so let me try to... Uh, can you add... Um, Helena, can you add the link again? Or I can do it, actually the link to the live online class. Let's see how this works. Okay, let's see. Here's the link. Okay, here's the link. Rochelle, let's see if um, you can screen share and I'll talk. Let's see if that's possible. Actually, I don't think it's going to be possible. But we can try. Uh, IMS in resource? Ah, that's a good question, Rosanna. That's an excellent question. Uh, if you think about the logic bet between uh, the two and why one would go into the uh, activities and the other one would go into the resources and why. Poodle class, we missed a lot of the tutorial at the end. Uh, yeah, I created a video. There was a problem yesterday. I created a video. The recording is not very good. The Poodle video. I believe I added it to the playlist for this as well. But if you go into the course, Amina, you will find the Poodle video. If you go into the playlist, into um, Nellie Muller videos, YouTube videos, you will find 
a lot of uh, videos that you will find useful. Okay, so Nellie Muller, YouTube. Okay, there it is. You can't hear anything? All right, okay, so we're gonna end. We're not gonna screen share. I think it's fine. You can hear. All right, so uh, I'd like to thank you for joining. If you have any questions, keep using the support to ask questions. Make sure that if that you watch the video that I shared with you. I think it'll help you uh, get your badge, but not only get your badge, but understand a little more about the checklists and how to use the checklist with your students. Okay, and to say thank you. I don't know if I'm frozen, probably am. To say thank you and see you on the Moodle. Okay, so watch the video. You should be able to um, get your badges really fast. You can get your badge in about two minutes for week two. Really easy. Yes, of course, you can finish. You can get a badge for week one, week two, before Monday, before we start week three. You can also w work ahead if you like. Have a wonderful week and happy moodling. You'll get it, Sheila. It's not that difficult. And after watching the video, you'll realize <laughs> how easy it was. If I think Roseanne, I think you got the badge. I uh, know oh it's Rosemary. You need to go into your profile for the course. Notice this profile for the course on the left and this profile outside the course. While you're in the course in the Moodle for Teachers Evo 14, on the left you'll see profile and the course. Go into that and you'll see your badge if it's there. Just watch the video and you'll get your badge for week two. And I think I also created a video, and I think Thomas has been spreading it, on how to get your badge for week one, too. Uh, Rosanna, I think you got your badge. The problem with the badge is that many of you uh, didn't quite get the resource form correct. So I disabled it. But I'm going to reopen it and you'll see it, Rosanna. I'm sure you have it. Yeah, I know Jordana has it as well. I think about seven people, or maybe more, actually more, have it. What does it look like? Oh, that's a good question. It looks like a badge. By the way, in the next course, you'll get a chance to get a teacher with IQ badge, level one. Okay, so... Enjoy your week and moodling, and you're doing a wonderful job, so keep up the good work.